Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. If you find this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button down below and also consider hitting the tip button to leave us a tip. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap the bell for notifications so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. In the video today, we're doing a full new user guide to this phone. We wanna teach you everything from the basics to how to troubleshoot the phone to the advanced features so you are a full expert on this phone after watching this video. So this is a compilation. So here is what you can expect from this video. So we're gonna start with a beginner walkthrough for someone who is new to Samsung phones and just wants a walkthrough of the buttons and how to navigate the screen, downloading apps, the, the basic basics. If you don't need those basics, but you'd like to learn what's after that, you can jump to the next section of the video. It will be broken down into chapters. In the second section, I will go over tips and tricks and also some really cool hidden features. Then I'll go over how to take a screenshot and then a really fun feature, I'll go over how to mirror your phone screen to your TV with a few different methods. After that, we'll go over how to soft reset your phone if you find the screen frozen and it's not responding to your touch. So kind of a brief how to troubleshoot the phone. And then finally, we'll end with a how to factory reset your phone. So that's what you can expect from this video. Um, those are gonna be the different chapters. And also in the description below, you will find a link to our favorite accessories for this phone. Uh, for example, a longer charging cable, uh, a car charger, a magnet for the car if you wanna mount it to your dashboard. Just a bunch of really cool things to complement this phone. So make sure you check out that list below. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's get started with a quick tour of the exterior buttons of the phone. So on the right side of the phone here, you will find the volume up, volume down, and the power button right here. Now the power button is how you turn the phone on and off. Now, if you just tap the button when the phone is already on, it will put the phone asleep, but uh, tapping it again will wake the phone up. So just a quick tap, again, just wakes the phone up, turns the phone off, but it's always still sleeping and still sort of awake. Okay, if you wanna power the phone off completely, what you'll first need to do, so tap the power button, make sure you can see the screen and just take your finger and you're gonna drag it across the screen. And let me try it one more time. So put your finger on the screen and just drag it right across. And that's how you wake up the phone or you unlock the phone. Next, we'll need to swipe down from the top of the screen here and do a second swipe, so two times, and that will bring up this button here. This is your power button. So we'll tap there, and then we'll tap the power, and power again, and that will actually turn off the phone. So important thing to know, holding the power button down is actually programmed to do something different. So um, this is the kind of automated way to turn off the phone. Now, um, there is a way to change that, and I will go over that uh, later on in the video. There's a way to reprogram the power button so that, um, actually, I can go over that right now. As soon as the phone wakes up, I'll walk you through how to change that power button so that when you hold the power button, you can turn the phone off versus having to swipe down the screen. So I'll show you that. Um, while the phone is restarting, I'm just going to continue my quick tour of just the outside of the phone. So volume up volume down and the power button right here. On the left side, you'll notice there are no buttons. Um, at the top of the phone, you will find um, the SIM card tray right here. And for those of you that have a SIM card you're bringing over from an older phone, this is where you would put in that SIM card, just right there at the top. So you'll need to grab the, the box and find this little tool. This is called your SIM tool. And there's a little hole at the top that you can um, just put that in and push. And this will pop out your SIM tray just like this. Just enough for you to then take it out. And then you can put in your um, micro SD card from an older phone. And then have all those new pictures show up on this phone. So just as a disclaimer, that's how you do it, but you will need this. If you can't find this in the box of your phone, just find a paper clip, 
bend it back and it will also allow you to open up the phone. At the bottom here, you will find the power cord or the charger, um, the charging port, excuse me. And this phone does use what's called a type C charger. So if you need to buy a replacement, look for a type C charger. In the description of the video, you'll find a link to uh, our best accessories for this phone. And you'll find um, a replacement charging cable, longer charging cables, things like that. So definitely check that out if you're looking for more cables for it. It also does have a headphone jack on the left side there, so you can plug in your traditional headphones. So I just tap the power button here to wake it up. I'm just gonna slide or do a swipe. That's how we unlock the phone. Now quickly, I'm gonna show you how do we change the menu so that holding the power button will actually turn the phone on and off for you. So you're just gonna swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe a second time, and swiping is just putting your finger on the screen and just dragging. That's whenever I say swipe, that's what I'm referring to. So tap on the power button at the very top, not this magnifying glass, but the second button right here. And when you tap on that button, at the very bottom, it'll say side key settings. Tap there, and we're just gonna change this to, uh, right here it says press and hold to wake Bixby, which is the smart assistant. We're gonna change this to power menu. And now, when we go back home, if I hold down the power button just like this, it'll take me right to this menu, which allows you to turn the phone off if you want to or restart it. So that's a quick little um, tweak you can make to make it easier to turn the phone on and off. Now that we're done with our tour of the buttons on the outside and the SIM card tray, now we're gonna move into how to navigate the home screen. So this is considered the home screen of the phone. At the bottom here, you'll find three buttons, recent apps, home, and the back button. I'm gonna go over what each what each button does. The first thing is uh, the home button, very important. No matter what you open, tapping the home button takes you back to this screen, which is the home screen. Let's say I were to tap on the uh, phone button because you wanted to make a phone call. Um, I can you know dial the number, tap the green button to make a call. And when I'm finished, I'm just gonna tap on this button in the middle, this little circle, and it will take me back to the home screen. No matter what I'm doing, it's always gonna take me back to the home screen when I tap on this button. Now, to the right here, we have what's called the back button. This is a button that takes you back one step. Um, as an example, I'm gonna swipe down and tap on the settings wheel in the corner to get to the settings menu. So let's say I'm in the settings, and let's say I tap on the, uh, let's see. Let's say I tap on advanced features. And I'm reading this menu, and you know what? I don't find the thing that I'm looking for. No problem. I can tap on this little back button here, and it will take me back one screen, just like that. So that's all the back button does. It just takes you back one step. Now. Right now we're on the main page of the menu. So if I tap the back button again, there's no other page for it to take me to. So it's just gonna take me out of that app. So I'm gonna tap it and it's gonna take me back home. So it's just a quick shortcut to always help you move back one step. Now the last button here on the left, the recent apps button, this shows you any apps that you had open um, that are still running in the background. So if you notice, we opened the, the phone app and then we opened the settings. Now we didn't actually close those apps. We just opened them, started doing something, and then we went back to the home screen, which is the screen we're on now. So if I tap the recent apps button, I'm gonna see those two apps show up. Settings and the phone button, okay? So if I wanna actually close out these applications, I can do what's called a, just a swipe up and that will close those applications. So just swipe up and it will close those applications as well as any other applications that are still running in the background. Now let's say 
I want to go back to settings because I was working on something and I'm still working on that. Well, I'm going to tap the recent apps button and guess what? Because I never closed it, it's still open. I can simply tap on it and now I can easily get right back to that app and continue to work out continue working on what I was doing. So that's one of the benefits of this button here is it, it will always show you what's running in the background and you have a quick way to get back to whatever you're working on just by tapping that button. Now, once I'm finished with this, I can always just swipe up to close it or I can tap close all and it will close this application as well as all the other applications that are running in the background. Now, one quick point I forgot to mention Whenever I refer to uh, an app, um, an app is short for application. Think of an application like a program on a computer. So computers have programs, phones have apps or applications. So whenever I say app, I'm just referring to these little icons here. These are the computer version of a program. They're just apps, which is short for applications. Okay, so now that we've gone over the buttons, the next thing I want to go over is uh, what is called your notification panel. Now, if you take your finger and put it at the top of the screen and just swipe down, it'll bring up what is called the notification panel. So um, if ever one of your applications has a new message that has come through, it'll show up in this section. For example, let's say you sign into your Gmail, you would be able to see any of your new messages in this section, a new, a new Gmail. If someone were to send you a text message, it would also show up in this section. If you had a missed call, you would just simply swipe down and go to this section and it will show you if someone has called you recently. So this is just where all the notifications for all the different things happening on the phone, this is where they all come through and how you check it easily. Let's say, this was a call right here. If it was a missed call, I would just tap on it and it would take me right to the phone app and I could see who called and then I could call them back. So this is how you uh, kind of interact with all the notifications that are coming through your phone. Now at the top of the screen here, you have what are called switches. Um, these are just shortcuts to different settings for your phone. And one of the most important shortcuts is right at the top here, which is your Wi-Fi shortcut. Let's say you have Wi-Fi at home and you'd like to connect to your wireless internet. You can turn that option on right here. Now I can tap the button and once it lights up in blue, that's how I know it's on. And then it should bring up the menu for me to select any Wi-Fi networks that are available. Now, the menu didn't come up, which is no problem. So I'm gonna swipe down again. And this time I'm gonna hold down on that little Wi-Fi icon, which is the first one we see here. Just hold down. And it'll bring up a list of all the available Wi-Fi networks. So let's say you're at a friend's house and you'd like to connect to their wireless internet or their Wi-Fi you would look for their network in this list. Let's say their Wi-Fi was um, this one here, My Spectrum. I would just tap on it, and then it's gonna bring up this screen and ask me to type in the password for their Wi-Fi network. So you'd have to ask them, hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? And then they would give it to you, you type it in, hit connect, and then your phone can connect to their Wi-Fi. So that's how you easily connect to Wi-Fi on the phone. Now, that's just one switch you'll find at the top of the screen here. You'll find this next switch here, which controls the volume. So the way the volume currently looks, the icon, this means that my volume is turned up. If I want to put the phone on vibrate, I would simply tap on the little speaker right here. And now you'll see a little slash over the speaker, which means now your phone is on vibrate. Now, if I tap it again, now, you notice it's not lit up at all and that means that your phone is on silent. So your phone won't vibrate or you, it won't make any noise when you receive a notification or a phone call. Now if you want to turn it back on to regular sound, just tap it again. 
and now your sound is back on. So that's how you switch between vibrate, silent, and normal sound. And you'll find a few other cool options here. So Bluetooth, if you have a Bluetooth speaker at home or headphones and you wanna to connect to it to play music or take calls, you wanna make sure this is lit up. And then if you wanted to connect to that Bluetooth device, just take your finger and hold down on that icon until this menu comes up and then the, your phone will begin to search for any available Bluetooth devices it can connect to. So you'll need to then take your Bluetooth device and put it in the pairing mode and that will vary based on the device but in the settings or uh, on the in the manual of that device look for something that says pairing mode and make sure your other device is in the pairing mode first and you should see it show up in this list and then you can tap on it to connect to it. You might need to come up to the top here and tap on scan and that just tells the phone, hey, start looking for new Bluetooth devices because you're trying to connect to one. Okay, and um, just a few more things. You've got your screen rotation. This rotates the phone when you turn it sideways. This is your airplane mode for when you fly. It turns off all your cellular connections which they ask you to do when planes take off. And then here you have your flashlight. When you tap that, you have a flashlight that will allow you to use your camera flash as a light. Now, um, one cool thing to note is swiping down one time brings up the six, but when I swipe again a second time, you'll notice we have more options available. So mobile hotspot, we have our power saving mode, our GPS, so if you wanna turn on our device GPS settings, screen recording, um, smart view if you wanna connect your phone to your TV, um, and a QR code scanner right here as well. Do not disturb, dark mode, all these other cool settings you can take advantage of as well. So those are just a few other switches you can get to. They're just shortcuts to, again, things you'd find in the settings. Now, I also want to point this out when you swipe down that second time, you now have access to your brightness for the phone. So if the phone is too bright, you can simply turn it down using the little slider at the bottom here. Or you can say, it's not bright enough. I want it brighter. So then we can slide it the other way to make the screen brighter, just like that. So that is your notification panel. And um, that's where you'll find, again, your notifications and shortcuts to different um, settings you may need to control. Okay, moving on to our next section, I'm now gonna go over uh, applications. So where do you find them? How do you download them? And what is that process? So the first thing is you'll notice on this home screen, you have a few icons or a few applications if you swipe over, you might have a few more here, but these are not all the applications on the phone. If you wanna find the rest of the applications, you'll simply need to, from the home screen, swipe up, and it will take you to what is called the app drawer. And this is where you'll find all of the other applications that are on the phone. They're all in this section. So this page and on this page. So. That's where you see everything that's on the phone. And you'll notice at the top here, you have a couple of folders. This is a folder with Google applications, a folder with Microsoft applications, and a folder with Samsung applications. So next I'm gonna go over, how do you download an application or a game on the phone? Well, you'll need to look for this icon, which is called the Play Store. The Play Store is your basically one-stop shop to download things for your phone. So um, applications, games, um, the, there's so many different things you can download for your phone. I'm gonna quickly pause. I'm gonna go back to talking about that in a second. I first wanna go over how do you sign in to the Play Store? So you will need a Google account or a Gmail account, which is basically the same thing and you'll need to sign into it because every time you download an app, it saves it under your Google account, um, which makes it easier um, to download those apps once you get a new phone. It just saves them all under the same account. So you do need to sign into your Gmail first before you do anything else. Now, 
um, we can kill two birds with one stone here. Um, if you currently have a Gmail account, um, we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna go home, tap the home button here. We're gonna swipe up and in the Google folder, just tap on this folder that says Google and go to Gmail. So uh, I'm gonna help you sign into your Gmail account so you can see all your Gmails. And once we sign into that, it's gonna automatically unlock the Play Store or basically sign us into it so we can then download applications. So I'm gonna hit, uh, got it here, and it says add an email address. I'm gonna tap here to do that. And I'm gonna tap on Google. And this part usually just takes a second. Um, if your phone already has data service or you're connected to Wi-Fi, then you should be able to do this. However, if you're not connected to Wi-Fi or your phone's data service, then it won't allow you to sign in. So make sure you're connected to a network. I'm gonna tap in this box that says email or phone. And then I'm gonna type in my email address and my password. Now, if you don't have a Google account or a Gmail account, this is where you'll need to tap create account and that will allow you to set up uh, a free Gmail account. And it'll just ask you for some basic information, first name, last name, and what you want your um, Gmail account to be. So it's a super easy process, it's very quick, and it just starts with tapping create account. I'm gonna quickly uh, enter my information and then we'll jump to the next screen and start talking about how to download applications. Okay, so I've just entered my um, Gmail account and password, and this is the next screen that it's taking me to, which says, turn on your backup and sync. So you can turn this on and it will begin to sync um, everything on your device, such as contacts. Uh, so in the event you lose your phone, all those contacts saved uh, will be saved to the cloud and it just makes it easier for you to uh, recover these contacts when you sign into a new phone. So I am gonna tap turn on backup and sync. I'm gonna tap I agree to the terms and conditions. And after that, um, it'll ask you a few more questions about backing up to Google Drive. We're gonna hit accept. And then after a few seconds, you'll see your email address pop up here and hit take me to Gmail and we're good. We're officially signed in. This is where you'll find all of your uh, Gmails and you can you know, start looking at emails, reading and responding. Now one other important note, um, you can add other Google accounts um, or you can add other email accounts to this application. So if I tap on the menu here in the upper left corner, next you're going to just swipe up and tap on settings and tap add account. And this will take you back to this screen and it will allow you to add your other email accounts. So if you have an Outlook, Hotmail, Yahoo, or any other email accounts, you can add them selecting one of these options here. And then in your Google account, you can toggle back and forth between those different accounts by simply uh, in the upper right corner, tapping on this little circle by tapping it, you'll see all the email accounts will show up underneath here. And you can just tap on, an, on another one on the list to jump to a different email account. So I'm gonna tap our home button to go back to the home screen. And now we're gonna go to the Play Store again. And you'll notice we are signed in and now able to download applications. So again, everything is tied to your Gmail or Google account. And once you get signed in, it unlocks more things on your phone. So. Um, you'll find so many different applications and games in here. I just want to point out a few things. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find games, and you're in the game section. If you just want to browse and see what games are available, you can simply swipe through just like that. You can tap on apps. These are um, other things like Netflix, Hulu, um, social media apps like Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. You find that in this section. Movies and TV, you can go through and you can buy movies or TV shows to watch on your phone and you can buy books as well. 
So those are the different sections. Now, although they have those separated into sections, by um, just doing a quick swipe down, you'll have a search box at the top of the screen here, and this will allow you to search through apps and games. So let's say there's a specific game you're looking for for your phone. You want to download a crossword puzzle game. This is the easiest way to search. I can either tap in the box at the top of the screen here, or, you know, and type it. I can type in crossword and it will begin to make recommendations. Or I could tap on the microphone in the upper right corner. And I can just say crossword puzzle. Crossword puzzle. And this is using the voice to text feature. So tapping the microphone will allow you to talk and then it will just type out what you said. And so here, there's a few different crossword puzzle games. Uh, I like this one here, so I'm going to tap on it. Now one thing you'll notice, um, there's, a, there's always gonna be a big green button and it'll either say install or it'll say, um, it'll have a price there. If it says install, that means that the application is free. If there's a price there, it means that that's how much it costs to buy that game or application. So be aware of that. If you're not looking to purchase a game and it shows a price, then you'll need to hit your back button to go out of that and try to look for another application that's free. Um, let's try it again here. I'm gonna tap on it. And if I like this one, now one way to know if you're gonna like it here is tap on the pictures under the green button. So just tap here you can swipe through and see what the application looks like or the game and see if it looks appealing to you. I'm gonna hit the back button here and let's say I say, hey, I like this, I'm gonna download it. Tap on this big green button that says install and it will begin to download that application on the phone. And you'll notice while it's downloading, um, here you'll see other suggested apps that you might like based on what we're downloading here like a Scrabble app here or Solitaire. I can tap on here and say, oh, this Solitaire game looks nice. I can tap install and now I'd be downloading that too. Now I'm gonna hit the back button to go back one step and you'll notice we don't see our green install button here anymore. Now it says play and that tells us that the application is ready for us to play it. Now we're not gonna play it from here. I'm actually gonna go home. So tap the home button at the bottom. I'm gonna swipe up to get to my app section and swipe over one screen. And this is where you can see where the shortcut is for that application. So I, I like to show people how to get to it here because once you open your phone and you say, hey, I wanna play that game I just downloaded, how do I find it? Well, simple, swipe up and there it is. It should be on this screen or this screen, one of the two. And I can just tap crosswords here, tap I accept, and then I'm gonna be right into the game and be able to start playing it. So it's just that easy to download an application or game, find it, and begin to use it. I'm gonna tap the home button here. So that was the process for downloading applications and just the kind of uh, information behind it you would need to get started. Now, the next thing I wanna go over is how to make a call and how to send a text message. So the bottom of the screen here, this little green button with the phone on it, this is your phone. And you'll have three options here, keypad, recent apps, and contacts. Now I'm gonna tap on keypad, and this is how you easily dial a number. Obviously put in the zip code, 323-853-1212 and tap the green button to start the call. And I don't have a SIM card in the phone right now, so it's not gonna let me make calls, but that's the whole process to make a phone call. Literally green button, make sure you're on the keypad, type in the number, and then hit this green button here to make the call and then it'll begin to ring, and then if they pick up, great. If not, they won't. You'll see a red button on the side here, which is the button you tap when you're ready to end the call. Tap the red button, the call will be over. Super easy. 
And then when someone calls you, you're gonna see a green button and a red button. And it's the same thing. You tap the green button, or actually, I take that back. It looks a little bit different now. You might see, um, so depending on when you see this video, the process does change from time to time. Um, on some versions of this phone, you'll see a green button and a red button, and you either tap the green button to answer the call or tap the red button to decline it, which is to say I don't want to answer, or um, you'll see um, a button in the center of the phone that you'll swipe up to answer and swipe down to decline. I want to say the way you'll see it is the green button on the left and red on the right. So uh, when someone calls you and you see those two buttons, green means go, answer, red means decline, don't answer, and that's it. Now let's go over how to send a text message. We're gonna tap on this little blue icon here at the bottom right next to the phone. This is your text messaging app. And we're gonna tap on this blue circle at the bottom right corner to start a new text message. So I'm going to first type in the phone number that I want to text. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit the next button at the bottom here on the keyboard. It'll bring me right to this box that says enter message and I begin to type what I wanna send. Hi, how are you? And then hit this circle button here to send the message. Now one important thing I want to add is if you like to send someone uh, a picture or something additional, you can tap on this little arrow in the left side right next to the message, this top arrow. It'll bring up the menu and allow you to send a picture. So this first square is you sending a picture that's already saved to your phone. And to the right of it is a camera. If you tap on the camera, it'll allow you to take a picture or record a video first and then uh, attach it to the text message and send it. So I'm gonna tap on take picture. It's gonna bring up the camera and I'm gonna take this quick picture. If you notice, there was a little white circle. I just tapped on the white circle to take the picture. And now I'm gonna press OK. And it's going to add our picture to the message. So there's our picture, there's the message we typed. And then we're gonna tap on this little circle to send the message. So that is how you send a text message and also how you add a picture to it as well. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is how to set up the fingerprint scanner so you can unlock the phone using your finger. We're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen and in the upper right corner, tap on this little settings wheel. I'm gonna swipe up until you, until you see um, biometrics and security and then tap on fingerprints. Now you can, you can program one of two things. You can either program what is called the facial recognition or the fingerprint sensor or both. The facial recognition is really cool. You can bring the phone up to your face and it will unlock the phone um, once it verifies it's you. Or you can um, use the fingerprint sensor, which I kind of prefer in this case you take your finger and you just tap the screen on a certain spot and it will unlock the phone using your fingerprint. So for the sake of this, I'm gonna show you how to do the fingerprint sensor, but if you'd like to set up the face recognition later, go back to this section and just tap on face recognition. Let's move forward with fingerprints. Tap continue. So whenever you set up a fingerprint sensor, um, on the phone, you do need to set a backup password and that's in the event the fingerprint sensor stops working, you have another method to unlock the phone. So I'm gonna tap on a uh, pattern and just set a security pattern that uh, is a backup in the event that my fingerprint sensor is not working. I'm just gonna make mine an L to make it simple. It'll ask you to put it in twice, confirm it, 
And now it's going to start learning my fingerprint so I could use it to unlock the phone. So I'm going to move the phone up here. This is the fingerprint sensor. It's in the screen. So you're going to take your finger and just press and follow the instructions you see on the screen. So it'll ask you to adjust, move your finger around the button in different ways so it can learn it. Make sure I'm covering the whole sensor. And this process um, is usually pretty quick. It, it, should, it won't take more than a minute usually, but again, it has to get a good read on your finger. So just be patient with it. Just keep lifting and then placing it back down in slightly different positions so that it can learn your uh, fingerprint. We're almost there now. I think I've probably been lifting my finger a little bit too fast, so put it down and keep it there. And now we're almost done. Okay, we're getting to the end here. And there we go. So you do have the option to add another fingerprint. And I usually like to do my pointer finger and my thumb. And I usually will do one finger on my left hand as well. I'm right handed, but um, I'll do one finger on the left side just in case I grab the phone with my other hand. I still can unlock it with my finger. But in this case, I'm just gonna stop it after programming this one fingerprint. Hit done. And we're all set. For our first tip, we're gonna show you how to keep that screen on longer. It's so frustrating when you, uh, you know, don't touch the phone for a few seconds and all of a sudden the screen is going dim. Well, I'm gonna show you how to adjust those settings so that the screen doesn't go dim like it's doing right now. The first thing you'll wanna do is swipe down from the top of the screen and in the upper right corner, tap on the little settings wheel. Then we're gonna uh, go to the top of the settings menu and go to display. From here, we want to look for screen timeout. And we just want to change this to, what I like to recommend is two minutes. So then, if you're reading something or doing something on your phone, you don't have to touch it every few seconds. The phone can just sit and um, you don't have to worry about, again, constantly touching it to keep it on. Moving on to number two, we're gonna show you a cool feature on how to wake up your phone when it's laying on a table like this and you don't wanna always have to keep reaching to touch the power button. We're gonna enable a feature called double tap to wake and all you'll need to do is tap the screen twice in order to get this going. But first we will need to go to our settings. So we're gonna swipe back down again from the top, upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel. From here, we're gonna swipe all the way up until we get to the advanced features. From here, you're gonna come down to motions and gestures. And from here, we're gonna look for the option that says uh, double tap to turn on screen. Simply enable this, and then we can test it by turning the screen off and then tapping the screen twice with our finger and that should wake up the screen. And this makes it really easy, again, when your phone is laying on a table or if you're driving and your phone is on a mount, you just simply tap the screen twice for it to wake up and then swipe to get right into it. So that's a cool thing to turn on. Let's move on to our next feature. And this is a really cool feature. For those of you that haven't had um, one of the mid-range Samsung devices, you may have never had this feature. Um, it is called the uh, App Edge. And on the right side of the screen, you'll see this little section, it's clear, and it's called the App Edge. And basically, you can just swipe over from the edge, and it brings up this cool app shortcut. Now, these are um, the pre-selected apps, but you can change the apps in this uh, menu here and basically select whatever your favorite apps are so that no matter what you're doing, whether you're um, you know, on the web and you're browsing and you're, you wanna jump to a quick text message, uh, whatever it is, or you wanna jump over to Instagram or Snapchat, all you simply do is just swipe over to bring up that menu. There we go. 
and then you can just tap on that app and it will take you right to that app. In this case, I selected YouTube. Now let me show you how to customize this so you can have your favorite apps in that menu. We're going to first swipe over and depending on the case you have, um, you might have to get a little bit closer to that edge there, but um, uh, if there's no case on the phone, it's, it's even easier to just swipe over that menu. So the menu is open. Now um, you're gonna come down to this little uh, pencil here and this is where you can change the apps that are in the menu here. So maybe you say, oh, I don't really want uh, this combination here. I would rather have my Gmail so I can quickly get to my uh, messages. And then I can hold down on it and I can drag it higher up on the list in case you want it to be at the top. And we can go through here and say, okay, let's see. I would also like to have hmm, my calendar. Yeah, I'd love to have a quick shortcut to my calendar. So now I have Gmail, my calendar, shortcut to my text messages, YouTube for my favorite videos, and Chrome. And it's also set up so at the very top, it's going to have your recent apps. So these are the apps that you've opened um, in the last few minutes um, at the top. You can also turn this off if you don't wanna show your recent apps, if you just wanna show specific apps that you like to use all the time, it'll give you more space that way. That's up to you, I think. Um, yep, so tapping at the very top, the three dots up here, you can actually turn off the show recent apps and that will um, remove that section and then it'll just show whatever your favorites are. So that is called the app edge. Now there's another really cool enhancement you can add to this to create shortcuts to your favorite contacts and I'm gonna show you that next. So I'm gonna hit the back button at the bottom here and we're gonna bring up the menu again, and this time I'm gonna tap on the settings icon, the little wheel right here. And I'm going to, um, so we're on the app edge. I'm gonna enable people edge. And what you'll notice is that there's a few other cool options in here, so you can play around with these if you wanna have multiple options in that menu. For this, I'm just gonna specifically um, focus on the people edge. So I uh, check the box above people edge and now I'm gonna hit the back arrow at the top here. And now you'll see when I swipe over, I have my app menu, but I can swipe over again and now I can enable what is called the people edge and just tap allow. And once we hit allow here, we can now have just add a contact. And now I can have shortcuts to the people I call the most. So if I want to add a contact really quick, I would just tap on the little bubble there and I tap select contacts. Here I can easily uh, do a search for Joe's name. So I'm just going to tap search and Joe and tap on that first option here and hit done. And now I have him saved as a shortcut. Now this is how it works. Um, when you swipe over, you just tap on their name and you'll have an option to call them or send a text message. So really cool feature. You can have all your um, favorite people here. I wanna say up to about 16 different contacts. And again, you just uh, swipe over. That's how you switch between the uh, app edge and what's called the people edge. So really cool feature, great shortcut to allow you to get to your favorite apps. And I'm gonna show you some cool stuff you can do with that later as well. Really quick, I wanna show you guys this shortcut uh, underneath the video in the description. And just wanna shout out some uh, helpful resources for you. So uh, if you're looking at this on a mobile phone, right next to the title of the video, you'll see a little arrow. Tap on that arrow to get to your description. And I'll have a section that says, you need this for your A32. And in that link, you're gonna find some really helpful accessories to go with your phone. And one of the accessories I love to recommend is a longer charging cable. So for example, if you wanna have the charger next to your bed and your uh, plug is not close, really easy um, to just buy a longer charging cord. So I've got longer charging cords, deals on memory cards and a bunch of other cool things. So make sure you check out that. Just wanna uh, quickly shout that out. Now let's move on to our next tip, which is gonna be how to get more apps on your home screen. So right now the layout allows you to have four apps going across, 
and I want to say uh, four to five apps going up and down. If we hold down on the home screen and we tap on the settings, here we can go to what's called the home screen grid. And here you can change it. So instead of having four apps across and five up, we can change it to four across and six up, or we can do a five by five or five by six. And what this does is it just gives you more room. The apps will be a little bit smaller, but you can add more apps to your home screen. So for those of you that like to have all your apps on the front so you can see everything, this is a really cool tip. I love to have all my important apps right on the home screen. So that's why I wanted to show you that. Now one more thing I want to show you, hold down your home screen, tap on the settings here. And this is a new feature that Samsung added about a year ago, which is called uh, lock the home screen layout. Now when you enable this, it won't allow your home screen apps to move. And I don't know if any of you have ever had this problem where your apps are kind of moving because maybe your phone is on in your pocket and you know all your apps end up jumbled and they end up on all these random screens. By, by enabling this feature, it will lock all the apps on the home screen so that they won't move around. Once you set them in the position you want them, for example, I have my camera here and I have the Chrome icon here, and I don't want those to ever move. By enabling that feature, you can't move it. Even if you give your phone to your kids to play with, they can't move the apps around the home screen. So just a cool feature there. If you'd like to turn it off and rearrange the icons, just simply go back to the settings here, turn it off. This will then allow you to make changes. So if I wanted to hold down on the settings and bring that down to here, I can make that change and then go back and lock the home screen. So just a helpful tip there. Moving on to our next tip, we're gonna show you uh, how to use the one-handed mode. Um, the phone is a bit long, so um, it can be a little difficult holding the phone and trying to reach to the top of the screen, but you can enable something in the settings that will make that easier for you. And now that we have our settings wheel at the bottom of the screen, I'm just gonna tap on that to get to our settings. Go back to the advanced features, and I'm gonna look for the option that says one-handed mode. Turn that on. And if you tap on it, it will show you uh, how this works. Now, I don't particularly like the gesture option. I love the button option. So I'm gonna switch it to this. And all you really need to do is uh, just tap the home button two times to enable this. So you're holding the phone with one hand. It's kind of hard to reach to hit that button there. I'm just gonna tap the home button two times. And now it's gonna take me into one-handed mode. And now it's a bit easier for me to tap on that option there. And guess what? I can go home and I can continue to use the phone in this option here and be able to reach everything on the screen with just one hand. So that is the one-handed mode feature. And if you wanna turn this off, just tap somewhere in the outer edge of the box here. And that takes you right out of the one-handed mode. So there we have their big screen. Great for watching videos, tough holding with one hand, no problem anymore with the one-handed mode. Moving on to our next tip, we're gonna show you how to, uh, how to use what's called the split screen feature, which is how to run two apps at one time, which is one of my favorite features. I do this all the time. Let's say you wanna have a video playing at the top of the screen, and you're also texting someone in a conversation. You don't wanna miss anything in that video, and you also want to continue your conversation. No problem. What you'll need to do is first open the two apps. So watch what I do here. I'm going to open YouTube first because I want YouTube to be at the top of the screen. Then I'm going to go hit the home button. Now I'm going to tap on messages and then tap the home button again. Now I'm going to tap on this uh, recent apps button on the left side here. And the app I want to be at the top I'm going to swipe over so we're on YouTube because I want that to be at the top of the screen. We're gonna tap on the icon at the top and tap on open in split screen view. And then at the bottom, it's gonna give me some options here of what app I want to be at the bottom. In this case, I want it to be messages. So I'm gonna tap on messages. And now we have our YouTube video at the top, our messages at the bottom. Now I can go ahead and play this video here turn the volume down so it's not too loud. And then I'm also going to 
um, put this in the full full view. So tap on the video, tap on the square in the corner, and now the video is going to show bigger. And then now I can come down here and I can start a text message to Joe. Hey Joe, hi, how are you? So now I can hold this conversation here and still have my video playing at the top of the screen. Really cool. And then I can take the phone as well and I can rotate it as well in case you want to do it in the landscape position as well. So you've got two options there. Now if you tap on the um, three dots in the middle here, you can switch it and have the video on the right, text message on the left. All depends on what works best for you. And I'm going to show you one more cool thing here. So if we, now that we have our two apps set, if I swipe over and open up my app edge, swipe one over to get back to here, I can save this, these two apps here as an app pairing by doing this. So you need to make sure the phone is back in the portrait mode here. I'm going to tap on the, the two dots in the middle or the three dots, excuse me, tap on the three dots. And now I have this different option. You notice we didn't have this option when we were in the landscape mode, but now that we're in the portrait, we have this other option. And if we tap here, it's gonna save that group of apps. So now when I swipe back over, I have this app pairing. So if I wanna get back to this split screen view and have YouTube at the top, messages at the bottom, all I have to do is simply hold on this and just drag it over or just tap on the pair and it'll take us right back to this layout here. So really cool, just wanna show you, if I were to close out all the options here, swipe over and tap on this, it's gonna take me right back to my split screen view. Really cool. So that's how to use split screen and then how to save the pair so you can easily get back to it later. Making life easier, um, watch your videos, send your messages. All right, let's move on to our next tip, which is showing you how to launch your camera quickly from any screen, even if your phone is off. Let's say our phone is off, something amazing is happening. We wanna get a picture of that. All we need to do is just tap our power button two times just like this. It's gonna turn on the phone and take you right to the camera. So you'll never miss any important moments using this feature. Now, what you can also do is, let's say I'm in another app, maybe I'm on the web and I'm looking up something and then something amazing happens, I wanna capture it. You do the same thing, tap that power button two times, it'll take you out of that app and take you right to uh, the camera so you can capture that moment. So that's called the quick launch camera feature. Now, some of you might say, hey Wayne, that's great, but you know what, I don't take a lot of pictures, I probably won't ever use that. Well, you know what? There's a way we can repurpose that function to launch a different app. Let me show you. Swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, and tap on the power icon at the top. And here, you, you then wanna tap on side key settings. And then we're going to change it. So currently it's defaulted to quick launch camera, but I can switch it and say, nope, I just want to open an, an app of my choice. Maybe you say, I just want to get to my Gmail because I'm, I'm always monitoring my emails. I love to just be able to jump right to that. No problem. Tap on Gmail. Now, if we go home, just by tapping the power button two times, it will automatically launch Gmail. So you can set any app that you want to be the quick launch app. Maybe you want it to be Instagram. Maybe you want it to be YouTube. Maybe you want it to be your stock trading app, whatever that is, that's how you uh, make that the default when you double tap on the power button. All right guys, we're about halfway through and we got a few more cool things we want to show you. So hope you learn a lot of cool stuff. And uh, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe and tap the notification bell. Moving on to our next tip, we're gonna show you how to manually turn on the power saving mode. Now, this is a really useful feature, especially if you have a long day planned and you wanna make sure that your battery is going to last. Maybe you say, hey, I'm not gonna have access to a charger all day. I gotta make sure my phone stays on the whole day. Well, here's what I recommend that you do. You're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, 
and you'll have an option that says power saving mode. Now you can just tap on it to turn it on or you can hold down on it to get to some advanced settings. So um, you can turn it on here and what that's gonna start doing is limiting um, background function. So it tells you background network usage, syncing and location checking will be limited and motion smoothness will be changed to standard. So it's making some minor modifications that you really won't notice that um, are gonna allow the battery to stretch for longer. And it's giving you an estimate here. Right now my battery is at 67% and with the power saving mode on, I can expect my battery to last about a day and uh, 13 hours, which is pretty darn good if I say so myself. Now, that's one of the power saving mode options. The other option is this, turn this off, and we wanna enable limit apps and home screen. This is gonna really boost how much extra battery time you're gonna have. So watch this, we're gonna turn this on, and then we're going to uh, enable it, and it shows you, I don't know if you saw it right before I changed it, but it's showing we're gonna get an average of four days of battery life. That's crazy. Now, here's the thing. You're in power saving mode. Um, everything is gonna be limited, but I still have access to all my apps here. So if I just tap on add here, this is how I get to my apps. And I can still take pictures. I can still use my Google Maps. I can still make calls and text messages. So like just for example, what I would do is I would add my Google Maps. I would add Google Chrome. I'd add my camera and I would add um, contacts. Now here's the thing, YouTube is on the screen, but if your goal is to stretch your battery, you shouldn't be on YouTube because that will uh, drain your battery a lot faster. So just as an FYI. So um, either way, with this function, your battery is gonna last so much longer. And uh, one of the, um, good times to use this feature is in emergency something happens like right now our battery is at 67 percent what if the battery was on 12 percent your phone is about to die and you have to make sure it's going to stay on that's when you want to use that more advanced uh, option which is what i'm showing you right now because that's going to again restrict a lot of the background functions that are happening and make sure your battery is gonna stay on a lot longer. I've had so many situations, it's so frustrating. Your phone's about to die, you don't have a charger, and you have a phone that doesn't have an advanced feature like this to help stretch the battery, and your phone just dies, and then you're you know, in a bad situation. So it's good to know about this, and also to um, you know, use it in the appropriate situations to make sure your phone is gonna be on and you're able to use your apps and do all the things you need to do. So to turn this on, super, to turn it off, excuse me, super easy, at the top of the screen here, tap on the three dots and just tap on turn off power saving mode and it'll take, you know, a few seconds, take you back to the main screen um, and your phone will be just like normal. So as a reminder, swipe down from the top, swipe down again and the power saving mode option is what we just used. Now, most phones will ask you when you hit 15% or lower, do you wanna turn on the power saving mode? Again, if it's gonna be a long day, I would encourage you just turn it on sooner because then your, your phone is already gonna be restricting what it's running and it will by default last longer the battery. All right, for our next tip, we're gonna show you how to uh, customize your phone. And I'm gonna show you a few different ways to do this. So first, um, we're going to enable what's called the dark theme. And the dark theme is gonna change your menu, your this setting here, and the background of all the menus on the phone to uh, dark. So we're gonna, let me not go too fast here. We swipe down from the top, swipe down again, and then swipe to your left and just tap on dark mode. And now that's gonna change all your menus there to dark. And since we're here, I just wanna quickly show you, if we swipe to the left, you do have a QR code scanner. Tapping this will take you right to the camera and allow you to scan the QR code if that's something you need to do. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna do to um, customize the phone is we're gonna go to the Samsung theme store. To get there, you just need to hold down on the home screen and then go to themes. 
you'll need to hit continue here. This is optional, so optional things I usually don't check. Hit continue. And it's always gonna prompt for an update. Once the update is done, we're gonna have a cool store that's gonna allow us to download uh, wallpapers, uh, full themes, uh, different app icon packs, uh, all kind of cool stuff to really customize your phone. So uh, it's gonna kick you back to the home screen as it's updating the app. So just go back to themes and it should be ready to go. And it might prompt us to sign, oh, it doesn't do that anymore, okay. It used to prompt you to sign into your Samsung um, account first. So it looks like that's not one of the prompts, so that's cool. All right, so here we have themes, wallpapers, and icons. Three different things you can customize. Now, let me start with wallpapers. Everyone is pretty familiar with wallpapers. It's just changing the, the, the background of the phone and the lock screen. So if you come in here, there's all kind of cool options here to download. They even have a dollar everyday shop, so pay one dollar and get some cool themes. Uh, if you wanna just go right to the free themes like I like to do, just tap on top and then the all button here and change it to free. And this will only show you free themes. I always wanna see what's free first and see if I like one of these. And if not, then I look at the paid ones. That's just kind of my rule of thumb with things like this. And let's say you like um, this little earth wallpaper here, just simply tap on it to get a preview. You can tap the picture to see it bigger. And then we can um, just simply tap on download and it will download it right to the phone. Um, and then it looks like when you download it, that's when you've got to sign into your Samsung account. I knew somewhere it was the Samsung account. Not a big deal, it's free, and it, it, it uh, unlocks some other really cool features of the phone. So definitely I would encourage you, set up a Samsung account so you can download your wallpapers. I'm not gonna sign into it right now, I just wanna keep the video moving. But um, that is the process. And just wanna show you, if you did go to one of the themes that is paid, there is a feature where you can preview it. So let's see here, let's find, let's just go to this here. And let's see if it loads, it's taking a minute. So there used to be an option to preview it. Let me see if I tap on 99. You know what? It looks like they have removed the preview option, which kind of stinks, but oh well. You used to be able to like, put on your phone for 10 minutes first, and maybe it's for certain themes, but I guess this isn't one of those themes, so no worries. Anyway, those are paid, those are free. Now, uh, for themes, they're a little more advanced. So themes are gonna change the wallpaper, but it's also gonna change the icon colors. It's gonna change everything. So let me find a cool theme here. Let's say we did um, this little potato theme right here. One thing I encourage you to do is, again, Tap on the theme. Oh, here it is, see? Download trial. So you can trial themes, but you can't trial wallpapers. That's what it was, I was mixing the two up. So come in here first, and then just tap on the pictures, and look at all the pictures and make sure you like it. So as you can see here, we have uh, a little pumpkin uh, icons here. Swipe over, this is our lock screen. This is the dialer. This is the text message look. And this is what your notification panel is gonna look like. So these are all the cool things that are gonna change. The keyboard is gonna change, the text color, everything. So, you know, really cool way to just really uh, uh, make your phone look so unique and different. And sorry, I wanted to show you one more thing here. Now the third option here is just icons. And I'm just closing things. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> all right, icons. Under icons, you can just change the color of the icons. Maybe you wanna keep your wallpaper the same, but you just wanna have cool icons. Here you can see, there are gonna be all these cool icon packs. Um, same tip applies, if you go to top and go to all, you can get to the free ones. And these are all the cool uh, free themes you can, or free icons you can download as well. And just simply go to preview it before you download it, and that's it. So that's a cool way to preview or to customize your phone and just make it look unique. Some families will come in and, and everybody gets the same phone and so it's hard to tell, hey, which one is yours, which one is mine? 
use that theme store and that's gonna allow you to really maximize on um, just changing it to make it unique to how you want your phone to look. It's very easy. You're gonna hold down on the power and the volume down button for one second. Let's try it. So power here, volume down, hold, let go. There you go. Tap allow. And you can tap this little button here to crop the picture once you've taken it. And let's say I wanna crop out this little top section here. I can just drag the edge down like that. And then I can hit this little arrow at the bottom that is the button to download it. And now my picture is gonna be saved to my phone. And if I wanna go find that picture now, I simply just swipe up, look for the gallery right here. And there's my picture right there. And if you'll notice, if you go over to albums, it's actually gonna make a screenshot album. So all your screenshots will be saved in one place. Let me show you one more time how to do this. Again, power and volume down. We're just gonna hold it and let it go. Here we go. One, two, three, hold, let it go. Just like that. And there's our screenshot. Now I'm gonna demonstrate a few different methods um, because a lot of people have different devices. So I'm gonna to try to show multiple methods depending on what devices you have. So hopefully I can touch most of the people that are out there. Um, I'm gonna show uh, two different forms of mirroring. So the first method is gonna be if you're trying to demonstrate or show exactly what's happening on your screen exactly as you're doing it, a direct mirror, I'm gonna show that first. And secondly, I'm gonna show you how to just send a video from your phone to the TV. So if you're trying to watch a Netflix video or Hulu or YouTube, you can use that second method to just send the video to the TV and still use your phone to do other things. So anyway, let's jump right in. I'm gonna show it first and then after I'm gonna explain how to do it. So let's do that. Um, the first thing you'll need to do is Let's slide our phone over to the left here so you can see the screen. So in the first method, I'm going to mirror the phone to a Roku. So what you'll need to do is make sure your phone and your Roku are both on the same Wi-Fi network. And then you'll just simply swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, swipe to your left, and you'll have an option here called Smart View. We're going to tap on Smart View, and I'll see the Roku pop up on the list. My Roku is named uh, Office. So I'm gonna tap on Office, Start Now. And then what you should see is a prompt show up on the TV asking if it can accept um, the screen mirroring, and there it is right there. Just take your Roku remote, and go over to always allow and press OK. And then now, um, after a few seconds, you'll see the screen is gonna be mirrored to the TV. So now everything you do on your screen is gonna show up on the TV. Now this is asking about changing the aspect ratio. Just hit change. And it will kind of shrink the screen down just a bit. If you don't like this, you can always change it by tapping on the smart view icon and tapping on phone aspect ratio and going back to full screen like this. But now everything I do on the screen is gonna show up on the TV. I can open up any app. I can rotate the phone sideways as well. Obviously, uh, there it is. So anything you do on the phone will show up on the TV the same way. This is great for showing gameplay or uh, doing demonstrations, teaching someone how to use an app or a feature on the phone, or if you have uh, videos on the phone from a trip, all those are great options. So this is the first method of how to mirror your screen. When you're finished and you wanna stop it from mirroring, you will need to tap on the little smart view icon here and then tap disconnect. Now, if you have a Samsung Smart TV as well, 
You will need to have that Samsung Smart TV also connected to Wi-Fi and you can use the same method to mirror. So this method will work for Roku and for uh, Samsung Smart TVs and some other Smart TVs, it just depends. Now on the list, when I originally set it up, it did show LG, so uh, that leads me to believe that this will work for multiple Smart TVs. So that's the first method. Now the second method is for those of you that have a Google Chromecast, now, for that, you will need to download the Google Home app. So you will just go to the Play Store, do a search, just type in Home, and look for the Google Home app and download this app on your phone. And uh, with this app, it will allow you to also mirror exactly what is on your screen to the TV. So on the phone, we're just gonna walk through the setup really quickly. Get started, press okay, hit next. Um, I don't allow it to access location, that's just me. Now at the bottom of the screen here, you will see, um, you'll have to swipe down. So this is the main screen here, and I'm just going to swipe up. Now I've named my Roku uh, Attic TV. So right here, I just swipe down to other cast devices, Attic TV, I'm gonna tap on that. And then at the bottom of the screen, I'll have an option that says cast to my screen. Tap there, tap cast screen, and start recording, or start uh, casting. And now, same thing, everything I do on the phone will show up on the TV. So you've got two different options here for trying to mirror your screen based on the type of device that you have. Now, if you want to stop this option from casting, swipe down from the top of the screen. You'll have an option that says casting screen and you can um, just tap on it. Actually do this, swipe down. There's a little arrow on the right side of the screen. Tap on this little arrow and then tap disconnect that will stop your phone from mirroring the screen to the TV. Now, in, um, those are the two different ways to mirror your screen and everything on your screen to the TV. Now, in the second method, I'm gonna show you how to just mirror uh, a video or just send a video from your phone to the TV. For this method, we're gonna go to YouTube and we're just gonna open uh, a YouTube video and Let's do this video here. Let's tap on it. We've got a commercial here that should be over in a few seconds. Okay, so we'll pause it here. So what you'll need to do if you just wanted to send this one video to the TV, you're gonna go to the top of the video and tap on this little icon. This is your cast icon. And then you'll see here your different devices. So. Attic TV is my Chromecast, Office is my Roku, and then Link with TV is the third option. Now, if you have an Apple TV and uh, you're trying to send a video to your Apple TV, you would use the Link with TV code. And then on your Apple TV, you'd need to go and download the YouTube app and then um, go to the option that says Link with TV code, and then that will allow you to send it to an Apple TV. In this case, I'm gonna send it to my Chromecast, just tapping on Attic TV. Give it a few seconds and you'll see the screen is gonna to begin to change and then the video will automatically start playing on the TV. Now the cool thing about this option as I shared earlier is it will allow that video to play on the TV while you go home and are now able to do other things on your phone. So you can send text messages, you can make phone calls, you can open any other app you want while that video plays on the TV. So that's the best part about this second option. And I assume most of you are watching this video because you wanna play a video from one of your video streaming applications. And so hopefully all these different methods are good options for you and you find the one that works best for you. When you're all done, swipe now from the top of the screen. 
You can control the video from this section here. You can pause it. You can swipe down with two fingers and you can fast forward the video to a different point or you can tap on the X here to stop the video from playing. And that's it. So I hope you guys found that helpful. I try to be thorough and show uh, many different options so we can kind of touch everyone who had the same question. The first important thing you need to do if you're trying to stretch your battery on your phone is not leave your GPS on. So by simply swiping down from the top of the screen and then swiping down again, you'll find a location button and you wanna turn this off. And the way I do it is I only turn it on if I'm gonna use my GPS. If I need to use Google Maps to look up directions, I will turn it on. But other than that, I like to leave it off because the GPS does drain a lot of battery in the background. And some of you might go days or weeks without using your Google Maps, but your battery is constantly draining because your phone is always pinging your location. So I would say turn that off unless you're gonna be looking up directions. The second thing you wanna be mindful of, and we're gonna swipe down from the top again here, is the Wi-Fi. Now guess what? Many of us have Wi-Fi at home and that's why we have it on. But when you leave the house, just swipe down and turn off your Wi-Fi. Because the way the Wi-Fi um, adapter works is it's constantly searching for Wi-Fi networks. So why have your phone constantly searching for Wi-Fi networks if you're not at home? I would say when you leave the house, turn it off. And when you come home, just turn it back on. Now you're able to take advantage of Wi-Fi when you're at home. And when you're out, your phone is not using extra battery power, trying to find Wi-Fi in places you're not gonna use it. Now, if you end up at a Starbucks and you wanna use their network, turn it on, use it, and then turn it back off. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is uh, tapping on the recent apps button right here and simply checking at least once or twice a day to see how many apps you have running. Sometimes we have a lot of different apps that we've opened. And one of the things that people don't understand is when you open an app from the home screen, if you tap the home button, that app does not all of a sudden close. The app is still running in the background of the phone. So what you actually need to do is hit the recent apps button and you have to go to that app and then you can actually close it up here with just a swipe up like that. You can also tap close all and this will close all of the apps that are running in the background or programs and that will also help to drain some or save some of your battery. Now the fourth thing you can do is go to your settings, swipe down from the top and in the upper right corner, tap on the little settings wheel. And here we're gonna swipe up until we get to the device or excuse me, battery and device care section. Now in this section, you can do a quick optimization of your phone that will check your battery, your storage and your memory and just by tapping this optimize now, it will help to close out anything that's running in the background that might be causing your phone to run slower or any other issues that the phone finds during the optimization that's gonna slow down your phone. And just that fast, it's optimized the phone and now the phone is gonna run smoother and faster because of this. Now one quick tip is you can always go to the upper right corner, tap on the three dots right here and tap add to home screen. And now if we hit the home button right here, it's gonna give us a special widget. I think we have to swipe up here. So uh, it's gonna put a shortcut to device care in your app drawer. So from the home screen, just swipe up. You'll now have this device care app shortcut. Hold down on it and um, we're gonna drag it right to our home screen. So now, if you ever, or at least once a day, I would say, um, just go ahead and tap this button and it's gonna automatically take you to this device care section so you can do a quick optimization to make sure there's not any apps running or anything in the background of your phone that could be slowing it down. And the very final thing you can do to help improve your battery is using the power saving mode. Now, if you swipe down from the top of the screen here, swipe down again, you will have this little icon that says power saving mode. Now you can tap it to just turn it on or you can hold down on it 
for one second and it will take you to the power saving mode uh, like settings where you can kind of adjust the different things that it will optimize. So um, the first thing I love about this is by turning this on, it'll automatically show you how much battery life you will get by being in this mode. So if I turn it on right now, my phone's at 58%. It's saying it's gonna get me another day and eight hours of battery life by the optimizations it's gonna do. So I can turn this on and now um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna decrease my computing power a bit and it's gonna decrease the screen brightness by 10% and that's gonna help to stretch the battery a lot longer. So there, that's one of the main things you can do is just keep your phone in this power saving mode, especially if you don't you know, play a lot of games or you're not doing a ton with social media, you really won't notice a difference in the speed of your phone when you're in power saving mode. Now, if you are playing games, I wouldn't recommend you use this mode. I would turn it off, play your game, and then turn it back on. And there's one more thing I wanna show you as well. Let's turn this off here for a second. Now, let's say you're gonna be out for the whole day and you're not gonna have access to a charger. Maybe you're going on a, uh, to an amusement park or you know, just somewhere where you're not gonna have any opportunities to charge your phone. If that is the case, I would tell you to switch on this third option, which here, excuse me, the third option at the bottom that says limit apps and home screen. This is a more aggressive power saving mode. And you'll notice just by me turning it on, it went from one day, eight hours to three days, 11 hours. And by turning this on, it's gonna vastly change how the phone looks. So it actually turns off my wallpaper. It, um, it limits the apps I have access to. Uh, you still have access to quite a bit. So you just have to come to the top here, hit edit, and you would hit uh, plus here. And these are all the apps you have access to while you're in that aggressive power saving mode. This is also an important thing to know in case of an emergency, you find yourself trapped or in an earthquake or somewhere where you're not, you, you may not have power for days, by turning on this mode, it will again restrict all the power that your phone is normally using so that it can stretch your battery longer. And that's why it's saying it could get you up to three days of battery life. So this is a good thing to know about. I wouldn't recommend you guys use this daily. Uh, I would say this is more so for a, an extreme situation. Um, by the way, if you want to turn this off, just hit the three buttons in the corner, hit turn off power saving, and it'll take you back to the regular mode. So what I recommend is, let's go back to power saving mode just so you can see what I did there. So again, to get to that really aggressive power saving mode, I just turned on this third option, limit apps and home screen. Normally, I wouldn't recommend you do that. Just make sure these two are checked and you can use the phone in this power saving mode and you'll notice there's no change. Everything looks normal, everything will run just about the same and you'll notice just a slight decrease in the speed of the phone. So um, these are just five different things you can do to help improve your battery life. This is a great phone, it already has a really decent battery life but these tweaks are gonna allow you to get your, your phone battery to last even longer. So I hope you guys found this helpful. What you're gonna do is hold the power and the volume down button for about five to 10 seconds, just like this. Now this screen is gonna come up, continue to hold the volume down and power. And there you go. Once the screen goes completely black, that's how you know that it has fully triggered the soft reset. At that point, you'll just need to wait and you should see the Samsung logo pop up in a few seconds. If it doesn't pop up, just simply hold down the power button and that will turn the phone back on. And usually once you've uh, done this soft reset, if there is an app that has caused the phone to crash or something has caused the phone to freeze, it usually will clear all that up. Uh, and you should be good to go as soon as the restart is complete. Now, if you get to the main screen and the touch screen still is not working, and that means that there is an issue with your phone uh, with the touch screen and you might need to take it into a service center 
to have it repaired. So. In the video today, we're going to show you how to reset your Samsung Galaxy A32 back to factory settings. The first thing you'll need to do is swipe down from the top of the screen and you're going to tap on the little settings wheel in the upper right corner. Once we get to settings, we're going to swipe up and go to the accounts and backup section. From here, we're going to go up to manage accounts. And you're going to remove any Google accounts that you see in this section. So I'm just going to tap on this account, tap remove account, remove account. It's going to tell you that by removing the last Google account, it is going to no longer allow you to have security on the phone. So as you can see, that account is now gone. The reason you have to do this step before you reset the phone is if not, when you try to set it up again, it's going to ask for the information for that Google account. Therefore, you have to remove it before you factory reset the phone. Now we're going to hit our back button at the bottom and tap the reset button right here. And then tap on factory data reset. Swipe up. Tap reset again and you're gonna enter your pattern. This is if you had any type of security on the phone, so either a pattern or a number combination, you will need to enter that. And then you're gonna hit delete all. And this is going to initiate the factory reset. At this point, you don't need to do anything, but let the phone sit. And you'll notice the phone is gonna restart itself a few times and the process you will know is complete because it will take you to a screen that will say welcome and it will ask you to select the language. So, I hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.